Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I am concluding the conversation about putting a crocheted edge with sock yarn onto a finished rug hooked piece. And I have just finished this piece, so I am about to rewind and show you how I got to this. And this is what the edge looks like. It's quite a nice finish. It's not difficult. And here's how you do it. All right, so I'm gonna make a decision now. Um, it is a different day. I just put the same clothes on for continuity. So what I've done so far is think about it and languish a little bit. And I also took my gauge here. Um, you use whatever you want just to cut about an inch of a border around. So, and then I pulled the string, you know, so that I knew I had exactly an inch around the witch. And I'm just gonna cut it and I'm just gonna start crocheting it because if you know me, you know I just go, go for it. Now, if I were gonna, if I were going to have this thing sitting around for a year and a day kind of thing and I didn't have any like imminent plans to finish it, I, I would sew around the edge, right? So it didn't unravel, but I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> I, I'm not as, I'm not as neat of a worker as other people, but I get everything done in the same way, right? It's just different strokes for different folks, man. Um, I tend to do seat of the pants stuff. So let me see. I'm going to get us to an inch. And then I'm going to make my final decision. I'm going to give my final answer. I want to thank everybody who gave me feedback. I was super thoughtful. I read the comments to date and I w it was all super thoughtful. And I liked how some of you said, oh, I would do this because, and it, it absolutely all made sense to me. And all of the scenarios for the different colors of yarn, it all made sense to me. Um, because obviously I picked, I picked this, um, I picked the, the colors that I was deciding between. So I liked all of them. That's the problem, isn't it? So, okay, so now I have to decide. <laughs> I think I'm going to, um, and again, I appreciate all of your feedback. A lot of you thought that this was the best one because it kind of matched um, the, the background one. And I have to say, of all of the choices, I, I, liked, the, I liked this one for that very point. Um, a lot of you like the dark sparkle too, and I get I get that too. It has that magical glimmer to it. But at the end of the day, I think I am choosing between. It's a hard choice, isn't it? And and I did think about maybe doing one side. You know how when you can't choose a color of paint in your bedroom or whatever, you do an accent wall, and you've got this is one color, and then the other three walls are, and then you can add more than one right color to your surroundings. Well, you can do the same thing with this. Um, and it might be that I end up doing that. So I think what I'll do, so t it's still really tough. I think I'm going to hold these two out for now. I might alternate between them. I think I'm going to say no to that friend. I think I'm going to keep these two out. And I think I'm going to, uh, I was going to say, I think I'm going to start with this one. I, I might alternate. The thing is, if I choose to alternate this border, it means I'm creating another pattern. Right, so I have my composition, now I have a pattern in the border. And it's always a question of, do, do I want that? Um, and I'm not sure, I'm just not sure. I just feel like at the end of the day, this might be too matchy-matchy for me and this might be a little more subtle. I'm gonna start with this one. So, um, I usually have the name of the yarn in the center of it, but it must have fallen out because it's not in there. So let me get started here and let's get going with what this will look like. Uh, I typically do not crochet rugs, but um, I was practicing a little bit after the fair this weekend because um, I saw I saw um, Karen was crocheting rugs and I thought, oh, you know what, that looks fast and easy and I do crochet. So let's give it a shot. How hard can it be, right? I think I got it. I think I got it. I was I only practiced a little to be fair, but I think I got it. So it seems like the whole basis for if you are a crocheter, uh, this is going to be a single crochet all the way around. And just like with other kinds of rug making and sewing, indeed anything, right? If there is, if you need ease, right? Like on the corner, the, on the elbow of a dress or on the corner of a rug, you need to add extra. So I'm basically going to be doing a, a single crochet all the way around, but extras at the corners. Cause I need to round that corner. I need to make that corner. That's gonna take some extra material, right? One little thread isn't gonna stretch right around the corner. So let's roll and start. I want to start at a good place. Let's start down here where it's not too noticeable. I'm going to do the corner first, right? So that um, 
there's no extra pointy point there. I could have cut the corner down a little bit. I think I might cut the corner down a little bit. Making a decision about that. I don't have a huge border and you sometimes do see larger borders here. I'm going to ease it. It's all going to get wrapped under my crochet um, stitches, but yeah, I think I'm going to crop the corner a little bit. So, and I'm thinking about it the same way that I thought about the sides where I want to give it about an inch. I'm normally not this technical in my own life, but I can see an inch is about here. So this is about as technical as I get. Just to cut a little bit off, just to give me that much more um, of a chance of making a nice tiny corner. And I'm going to kind of roll it down or fold it down. I'm kind of rolling. I've got it into maybe thirds and I'm clipping it there. Do you see what I mean? I'm rolling it like this and I'm going to want to clip it down. And I'm not much of a clipper either. I do very few clippies. I kind of just hold it with my finger, but let's do best practice, right, if we're doing a video. And let me kind of ease this sucker in a little bit. And it's going to be really up to me to get the stitches as such that, you see, I'm going to have extra material on the corner. You see that, right? So I'm going to have to be careful when I come to the corner. Same with sewing, same with everything. I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful and thoughtful about where I'm placing uh, my hook, you know. But it, it can happen and it will happen. And like with everything in rug making and crochet, if you make a mistake, you can just back it up a little bit. It's not going to be the end of the world, right? It's not a stroke of paint. It's, it's something, it's a fiber that you can pull back out if you feel that you are making a pig's breakfast out of it. So I'm kind of just easing around this corner. Same thing, I'm, I'm folding it into a third. But if you want a thicker binding, if you want more of a prominent binding, then you could make it a lot bigger. I don't like to see bindings. Bindings are not really my thing. So I like to keep mine small and tidy. And you see what I'm doing here? There's still going to be a little bit of extra material because it's a quarter. It's the very nature of the thing. But I'm going to clip it down into place. And I'm going to hope that it submits when I get going with what I'm doing. And I'm going to get started. And I can't remember if I told you, but I think my crochet hook right here is a, is a um, G, which is a four millimeter hook. And it's a little wooden hook I got off Amazon. It's a cutie and I like it. I always like to st start at uh, anything, any kind of border thing in an innocuous place. So I'm going to choose like an off-center corner. I'm not going to start, you know, here or here, right? That's too tricky. Um, particularly because I know I'm putting ease into the corners. So I'm going to start down, you know what, I'm going to start right here, right, where her dress is right there. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fold back, I'll start right here. And I'm going to try to grab the first open hole next to her dress, which is the border of the piece. And I'm going to be careful about it because, yep, that's, that's it. That's the one that's closest, can you see that? to the edge of the thing. So I'm going to start there and I've got my hook through. Lost the end of the thread. That's a classic. Let me find the end of the thread. Hang on. Where'd you go? You snickerdoodle. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to leave a tail like that. I always leave maybe three inches. Don't, don't get the ruler out. It's not that specific, right? I'm going to bring the thread through and already got caught. There we go. This is sock yarn, by the way. And then I'm going to, just to get started, I'm actually going to put a clip right here because I can feel it tickling, tickling in my fingers. I've got my piece through and here's the tail. I usually hold the tail together. You can let it kind of disappear and, and work it in later, but I, I like to just hide it as I go. I'm just going to come around and kind of lock this one in place here. You see what I did there? Now I'm looking at what I've got and I'm already anticipating like quite a big problem. I'm 90% sure that the problem in my head, maybe you're getting there too, is uh, more than a suspicion. Let's do a couple of loops and then let's talk about a potential problem. So I've got my first loop up and then I'm going to go into literally the next hole that's free and wrap my yarn around, pull it up and wrap over. Now remember I've got my tail here too and I'm going to pull through all. Always pulling through all. And let's do one more. 
this is a single crochet. This is not a double crochet, so I'm not going to I'm not going to wrap over. I'm just going to go right down and into the next hole and then I grab from behind, pull through, come back up. Hold it back up so it knows where it, what it, it's expected to do. You see how my tail is emerging right there? I'll deal with that later. And I wrap and I pull through all. And at this point, I would wrap the tail behind. Now, this is where I have to make a decision. This is what I'm talking about. And I wonder if you're at home thinking, this is a problem, and I think that this might be a problem. I've only done a few. Let me do a couple more quickly so we can make an educated decision on this. Do that one snagged. See, the sock yarn is um, it's, it's very sort of cottony, and um, it's not t tightly, doesn't have a tight twist. So it does seem to want to um, unravel, not unravel, but I, I keep accidentally stabbing between. So we're going to come back to this motion. I'm just going to the next hole for each and wrapping around the back, right? Adding some to the back, pulling it through and wrapping over, pulling through. But let's talk about what's going on here. Well, this looks very pretty. That's what I want. But do you see, I think I missed, uh, I think I missed some spots here too, because I can already tell from looking at that, that this yarn is very thin and I think it's so thin that it's not going to cover well. So does that mean I can't use it? Oh no, I can absolutely use it, but I think I'm going to want to double it up. You see what I mean? And like, you know, just omitting the last two I did quickly, but the first ones that I did perfectly, yeah, this looks beautiful, right? That's a nice trim. I like that part. But you see how even these really good ones, it's not really covering super, super well. That makes me a bit unhappy. So I'm going to do what I usually do, whether I am crocheting or hooking or what. I think what I'm going to want to do is work two ply and see if that works better because this is a thin yarn. You know, when you see people um, hooking, uh, sorry, crocheting edges, you normally see like a good Briggs and Little 100% wool, three ply or more kind of thing. Well, this is sock yarn. And the reason I want to use it is because I like the way it looks and it has a silky feel to it and I like the colors. But it is a wimpy textile in comparison to three, three or more ply uh, Briggs and Little. So the best I can do is adapt as I go along because this is a thrift craft. So I have to bear that in mind. That didn't work well for me and I was projecting forward to spending time doing this and then seeing this super wimpy kind of lackluster border because my yarn is so thin. So let's come around again and let's start again with two ply. So I am gonna try again and I am doubled up now so I'm treating this whole strand as one strand. It's two pieces but it's one strand, right? So I'm coming back in to the first kind of row after my hooking and same as I did before, right? I'm just feeding some, leave a little bit of a tail. I'm feeding, I'm gonna leave a tail of about four inches. I'm feeding it into the hook, pulling it through, holding it in the back real carefully. Why do I have four strands? Well, because it's also the tail, right? It's my working, my two working strands plus the tail. And I'm gonna wrap around, don't do this too tight or it's not gonna work. Drag through. This is why some people leave their tail and don't work it in immediately, up to you. It does add a level of aggravation having the tail there, but then again, it's so nice to not have to deal with it later. And I literally go into the next hole. So you gotta eyeball that. And same thing, I'm just wrapping my strand over. We know it's multiple strand. Now here's the tail, right? I'm gonna let him do his thing now. I'm gonna set him free. I'm wrapping around and I'm pulling through both. Don't pull too tight. Now I'm going to the next hole. And am I a perfect hooker? Oh, God, no. So it might be that I'm not exactly level across, that I don't have a perfectly straight line in places. If that's the case, I'm going to the next hole, whether it's perfectly straight or not. You see what I mean? So, oop, you know what? I think I missed a hole. Do you see that? See how I missed that one? I, that's where I really want to be. So I'm going to unpull the one, and I'm going to try again. Very forgiving. I don't want to miss that hole because then it might be a little bit of a gap where you see the uh, backing a little bit, and that would be that would be bothersome. 
and then I wrap over and I go through both of my loops. And let's keep going. I wrap, no, I don't wrap over, I'm sorry. Single crochet. I'm looking for my next hole. And in a minute we will judge and see whether this is going better than it was last time. Wrapping from behind, pulling through the strands, bringing it up to the top where I want it to sit, wrapping over again, and pulling through both. Very carefully. Why, why do I have to be so careful? Well, this is very thin yarn, even doubled up, right? I know that it's thin yarn. Wrapping, pulling through, wrapping over again and pulling through both. I know that it's thin yarn, so I'm being very careful. It sometimes wants to like um, stab into itself, but you see how pretty this is coming out? I can fix this tail later, but I got it that far and it looks quite nice. And do you feel that it is looking a bit more solid here than it was with the um, single ply. I feel that it is. So I'm going to speed up for a minute and work to the corner. Now, I want to say that as we go along, I have been going in every hole. And you see, maybe that's too much, right? Maybe that's too much. Every time I do a border with a different yarn, right, even within sock weight, it's not exactly the same as the next sock weight. You, you can see, you might have to gauge every time. You can see it almost seems like it's a little bit tight. The top is looking very pretty, but it almost seems like it's too tight. So I'm going to experiment with, as I'm not taking anything out. I'm not taking anything out. I'm just going to experiment with, I'm about to run out too, so that'll be handy to show. I'm going to experiment with skipping a hole because I don't want it to, I want the, the edges to look like they're standing up at attention, you know, nice and uniform. And, oh, I am right at the end of my thing. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull through these two holes and that actually left a hoop because a loop right because I started with my tails so let me get another one threaded did you notice how when I started when you cut a length you have two ply right did you notice how when I started I started with the two tails instead of the loop well because I started with the two tails I ended with the loop right so that's going to be very handy for me right now because what I can do, if you took the multi-braid, multi-strand braid or the Amish toothbrush class with me, we did what was called a bow tie join. And I'm literally taking one width, one um, piece of my thread, one ply, and I'm running it right through the loop until it evens out. And it becomes an extension of my thread. Do you see what I mean? So now I still have the same piece of thread, no knots, no pig messes, all good. So I'm actually going to stay uh, in this loop, right? Because I still need to connect to this loop. I'm going to stay in my last loop like we didn't just connect. So it's fiddly. You want to get your hook back into that last loop, although it's occupied. And I'm going to, same. this join is right here, but you can see it's going to fall fine. And I'm going to do business as usual, go to the next hole, bring my um, yarn up, wrap around and come through two holes as always right and you really you really can't see that I that I added on right there that's the thing about bow tie joins is they are uh, very very handy and organic right so you see the top of my crochet trim it isn't a problem I'm gonna keep going to the edge and as I said I'm gonna go a little bit looser uh, maybe not in every single hole and I'm gonna see if it kind of balances out the energy, uh, the way that the yarn is standing, because I don't want it to be too angled, like the wind is blowing through the grasses. You know, I want it to stand pretty much at attention. And for a while here, it was going a little bit diagonal. So I'm going to be thoughtful of that as I plow forward. Now, as I get to the corner, you see, I'm really. Um, this is a real trouble. This is a real problem being uh, in the way of my hands. So I'm going to carefully, one by one, take off the clips that I clipped into place so I can do my corner. So I'm still doing the same thing for a little ways longer, but I just need for my hand to be able to get that grab without any kind of obstruction.
Okay, as I come to the corner, I'm really happy with the way this is looking. And I'm realizing it is pretty straight up. I think it's just the natural color changing aspect of it. When I'm pulling it, it is making these slight V shapes. It does create a bit of a pattern. But I am really liking the way it's looking and it looks very tidy on top. I'm happy with all this. I did notice off camera that this got snagged, one of the yarns in the back, but am I gonna cry myself to sleep over that? I'm not. The reason I didn't notice that it snagged was because I didn't see it. So if I don't see it, I'm not gonna be too bothered by it. Now, as I get to the edge, another thing is happening that I'm noticing, and I'm gonna wanna correct it, but I don't know if I'm gonna bother pulling out for it. Do you see how I was going a little bit higher here, like my fold was a little bit higher, and it's a little bit taller than it is there? That's not great. That is something I might want to pull out for, but that's my own fault, right? My fold was just a bit bigger right here than it was right here. Just a hair, but I am noticing it. And again, I don't know if it's something that is going to make me crazy enough to take it out. I'm about to go around this corner, and I think I'm going to take both pins out for this moment to show you. This is my corner loop here, right? So this loop here is the loop that's I'm one away. I'm going to want to put at least three stitches into that one loop. So let me do the other one first. I just need to kind of calculate because we need that ease on the corners. What is the ease? The ease means that, oh, I think I was too far away. You see that gap? Let's not do that. Corners are the most serious business because, I'm going to move my clip over here. I don't want it near my hand, but I don't want this rug. Um, unraveling since I did not doodle it up, as you know. So the corners are the most um, important uh, places, the most sort of crucial. Guess what? I hooked the piece, I hooked the yarn under my thing. What are the chances? Well, 100%. There we go, back in business. So everything I do on a corner, I'm thinking at least three times harder about. And if I miss a stitch on a corner, for me, that's really problematic. So it's worth going back and adding an extra stitch in. Let's just make it as good as it can be. Best practices, right? There we go. Now I'm just looking. No, because I missed one in my, in my head and with my hands, there's actually two stitches before the corner. So I'm getting those two little cuties in there. And now I am actually at that corner. You see the tippity tip, the toppermost, poppermost. Well, I'm going to go into that hole and I'm going to do our normal stitch. And then guess what? I'm going to go into that same hole, right? Do you see this hole here where my finger is? I'm going to go into the same hole, the very same, and do another stitch. Is the hole going to get worn out? Well, it will if you put 20 stitches in there, but you should be good with three. And now I'm looking at it very carefully because I'm on the corner, so I'm not fooling around. I want to make good decisions. And you see, can you see through that hole right there? I think I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put one more in. Three is the golden number with any kind of rug making when you're at a corner uh, or crocheting when you do your granny squares and stuff. I'm going to do it very carefully. I don't want to pull too hard because there's a lot of pressure on that one corner. But I'm about to alleviate the pressure of that corner because now I'm going to, go around, right, and start doing the um, side of it again. Now, because I had a bit of a thing uh, with my own stupidity in the height here, getting a little bit smaller, I want to think about that. And I'm just kind of unrolling with my fingers, just a hair, just a hair, I'm unrolling it a little bit to make it a little bit thicker. If it's not completely perfect all the way around, well, then it looks like a handmade rug. But as I go around, I want to be thinking, can I kind of even this problem out? It could be that I can undo it to here, because this part looks great. I don't want to undo the whole thing, but where it's a bit too thick where I started, it might be that in the end I come back to the beginning and undo it to there, right? And then I'll just loop up to that. That is possible, but we'll see what the whole thing looks like. I'm just coming around the corner and I'm going into the next hole. Three is pretty much the max, even with doubled up sock yarn that I want to do uh, in any one hole of linen. This is linen, right? So whether, no matter what backing I'm using, whether it's monk's cloth or rug warp, I want to be thoughtful about what the material can do uh, without stressing it out so much that it becomes a secret worry. So that was the next hole. I'm being careful. I'm going to do a few holes while I'm concentrating, one after the other. And my goal here, so my tails uh, came up a little bit differently, so I'm being a little bit careful with the
Yeah, I think I will just do it. So I'm just doing the last ones. I'm about to run out of my material again. And remember how I did tails and it ended in a loop and I connected loop to loop? Well, that means that I'm on tails again. So it's gonna kind of alternate um, what you can do. So I'm ending on a loop like this and I'm gonna leave it like this for the moment, right? As I'm gonna rethread it, but I'm gonna leave it like this for the moment. I'm even debating because that tail is so small I think I'm going to go back one loop. Let's go back one loop because I want something of a tail. I'm going to connect to this tail the same way that we connected last time. It's your preference how you want to connect. Um, you can do it your way. If you, whatever your way is is great. And then I'm going to put it through my loop and connect that way. So I want to be sure. The tails will work out themselves, you know, they'll fall into the background and if they don't, if they accidentally come to center stage, then you can always uh, tuck them back or use your hook and pull them back and hide them, right? These are kind of basic crochet techniques. I'm going to come through here, the loop again, and it is threaded up and I'm going to discreetly because you see I'm holding two sets of material there come to the next hole what I want is the continuation of, of my thread right I don't want to be tying up and cutting off and I have extra right because I've got tails so just be really careful about the way oops that didn't go through all be careful about the way that your the heads of your crochet loops are lining up they should be fine but if you find it difficult to thread through bow tie style, um, then don't. Do it ever, if you're a crochet or if you're not, you need a little bit of crocheting to do this video. Do it whatever way makes sense to you. So I think that's okay. It's hard to tell because I'm down to two now and I'm gonna have to move this guy. I'm gonna go ahead a little bit and I'm gonna be careful about the width of this because I've already struggled with that. Tuck it back in there like that move it down the, the lane a little bit, and I'm gonna come around the corner and make sure that this looks okay. You can fool with it to a certain extent, but when you are attaching and joining, you always run the risk of screwing it up. Unless it moves again, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks, and I will meet you a little ways down. Okay, so I really am liking the way this is coming out. This, to me, this looks fantastic. Um, Oh no, look at, there's a little gap right here. You see that? Ah, uh, there's a little gap right there. So I'm gonna have to go all the way back there. It's not the end of the world. This does happen. That's right about where my join was. As soon as I joined, can you tell? I should, I'm gonna leave that thread standing there. I'm gonna just correct it. Ah, uh, I missed, I missed a hole. And it's very noticeable. So it's as easy as that. If you're a crocheter and a knitter, you already know that pulling out stuff is just par for the course. It's just the way it is. But I'm pretty much trying to go into, on my linen, pretty much every hole. And when I feel like it's get, getting too crowded, I skip a hole or two. It's a lot sort of just getting a feel for it, making good decisions as you go, stopping constantly to look at your work because doing this kind of a border with a light, see I did it again, all right, so it's going to be a constant thought in my mind. Be careful, right? Be careful. Get as close to the finished piece as you can. Constantly a thought in my mind. Working with the thinner yarn like the sock yarn, pluses, oh, it's so thin and pretty, and it makes such a pretty design around the border. I love the color change. If you knit or anything already, and you use sock yarn or you have some in your stash, you know it's, it just feels great to use, right? It's not like a heavy hitter of a fiber, but it feels great to use. It's super pretty. All of the color, I mean, the colors just come out so nice with these color changing sock yarns. To me, the way it looks is a plus. It's very slippery, fairly easy to work with. It has its moments like anything, but it is a nice, uh, it's a nice fiber. Minuses of hooking, uh, crocheting a quarter like this with sock yarn, well, it's thin, isn't it? So I've had to double up. Is it a real hardship? No, it's not really a hardship. I just got used to doing my bow tie joins 
um, as I went. And that's a practice thing. And that's also an optional thing. But, you know, I got used to doing the doubles and it's fine. And maybe if it was an even lighter weight yarn and, and I had a more substantial piece than a, than a piece hooked with pantyhose, that I would want to do it quadruple depth. Um, or it might be that if my piece were just a thicker, more hardy kind of a piece, I might want to be working with a thicker yarn. It's something to think about. I've got a, my, my, sorry, magician pattern here is done with pantyhose, right? She's done all with stockings. So she doesn't have a, a really high pile. She's not really a thick, big, uh, hulky piece. Uh, she's a fairly thin, smaller piece. So I felt like going into my sock yarn stash was maybe a good call for her. And I feel like it was the right choice. This really is, I'm going to unclip again. It's getting too close to my hand. Um, but if I was doing a different piece that was, you know, way more substantial, I might want to think about doing a border like this with um, two ply, three ply, or more bulky weight yarn, whether it's like rug hooking yarn, Briggs and Little or whatever, or whether it's something from the craft store, just thicker yarn, that would work great too. And it would work the same way. The things you need to keep asking yourself are, are going into every hole, is that working? Is every hole working or is it getting too crowded? That's the first thing you need to think about. And you need to remember when you get to the corner, the average for going around a corner with anything, uh, any yarn crafts is three. Doing a corner is three. That's the average. With different yarn, you want to check. It might have been that I had to do four stitches in the corner. Turned out, no, three was still the right number. But you want to check. You want to check your distances because each skein is going to perform differently. And depending on what backing you have, that's another wild card. Did you notice how even on the corner, this is another plus with the sock yarn, it lays down so nice and flat, you know? It looks so nice and flat. So that it's not like a big lumpy border uh, corner. It's a nice flat corner. I can see a little bit of my fold here, right? I can hide that with the stitches or not because on this side, I think it looks perfect. So I'm going to continue all the way around that way, just single crochet right around with an eye on, is the distance right? Have I missed going low enough with any of my stitches? And when I get to the corner, I'm going to remember to put three into the same hole at the corner. When I get to the very end, which I don't think I'll do in this video, um, you know, maybe I'll stitch around it and I'll come back to you and hook it at the end and I'll show resolving it. Might as well. So, you know, I'm used to using a sewing machine and if you are comfortable with a sewing machine, I am just done with binder clips. So I'm just going to sew it. This is an option if you are comfortable. I'm just doing something very basic. I'm kind of tucking as I go in here. This obviously you could hand stitch this or you could stay with the binder clips, but I'm kind of keeping it folded at about this distance. I'm eyeballing it. I'm going to go to from E4, which is my zigzag, and I'm going to go to my largest zigzag, which is uh, width four. So style four, right? Zigzag. And then I'm doing the largest possible width. And I just feel like I'm going to go nice and slow. I'm just kind of getting it anchored down and I'd be careful about moving binder clip as I go um, but I think all in all when I have this kind of locked in place a little bit I think I'm going to be happier because it somehow plays me and triggers me when my binder clips are uh, touching my fingers and tickling my fingers and I'm thinking oh binder it, there's another binder clip it's the same thing as if you're a quilter and your pins right it's always the pin no matter where you are in your life it's, it's like a metaphor. There's always another pin. So you can eliminate that if you're a pretty confident um, uh, person on the sewing machine. And I'm just using my regular presser foot. This is not, not a fancy one at all. I'm just kind of running it through like this. All right, how's it going? It's going good. It actually is so much nicer to do this without the clips. You know, I'm not a, I'm personally, I'm not a clip person. Even as a quilter, I ha, I like have one pin in whatever piece I'm working on because it drives me crazy. But these are all things that are optional and just figuring out these things about yourself. 
I find it way more relaxing and fun to work on this edge now that I have sewn it down. So, you know, it's not for everybody, but it's for me. It's going, it's going fast. You know, I just did a super uneven little um, zigzag all the way around. It's just zigzagged all the way around, right? It's not perfect, but it is laying flat and there's none of these guys in the mix. So I like this better for myself. And as I go around, you know, I'm gonna be careful and thoughtful about it might not be even. And if it's not even, I gotta squeeze it a little bit more to make it a little bit tighter or pull a little bit harder to make it a little bit tighter. And if it's maybe a little bit too low, it dips down too much, then maybe I wanna do the crochet a little bit higher and lofty on top. You know, I can, I can go looser. I can go looser or I can pull tighter, it's up to me. But at least now, that aspect of it is out of my way. For me, that's a bit of a game changer. So I'm going to go all the way around the edge, and when I'm done, I'll come back and I'll show how to join. It's just what you think. I'm just going to connect to the other loop. It isn't going to be magic, um, but it is going to be fun to see it coming together. So I am on my last stitch here. I've gone all the way around, and I haven't done any tucking in of the tails or anything like that yet, but this is the way it looks going all the way around. It matches really well. It has a nice little edge to it. It's real pretty. I'm still not completely sure if I like it or not. I mean, I've done the whole thing. It's not like it's a massively laborious project. Um, I mean, it matches really well, and the finish is really pretty. I did have a problem over here initially where there was a height difference, right? So there's that disparity, and I'm going to have to figure out how to solve that because you can see I missed some stitches of the actual hooking, which was it's classic Diana. But I'm going to have to actually add some stitches there. But I want to finish this video so that um, you know how to end, right? And I've already, I just cut my tail like this a while back. And luckily I have enough to finish. So I'm doing my last stitch here, my very last one. And that gives me my last loop on top. And I'm literally, I'm going to want to connect it over here because this is my last loop. These are my first loops. I'm going to want to kind of tuck under the loops, bring the thread through both and pull on it really tight, cut it and then hide it. So I'm going to want these to sit right on top the way that they are, but I'm going to pull it through so it locks in place. And then I'm going to want to kind of tuck it underneath. So I have an extra loop because I had to make one more knot and I'm going to kind of fool with it until I can hide the tails underneath the different heads like this. And you probably are going to see, you definitely are going to see here that I connected this, right? This is my main problem, right? That I need to finish that up. But the head is going to come here and then you can see this one rises up. So I want to pull on it and tuck it under as best I can by using the hook and going under the heads of the previous ones just to hide the tails. And I hide as long as I can the two little tails, and then I'll typically flip over to the back and hide them even better, right? I haven't dealt with um, all the other tails you're seeing, but sometimes I reach through, do something like this, and hide the tails like that. And I'll do that throughout. All my tails that are kind of loose, I just grab them, pull them through, and hide, you know, when I say hide them, you don't need to hide them for the benefit of them not being visible in the front. Just hide them so they're out of the way and you can safely cut them and they're not going to come, you know, surprising you and sticking out of it. So I just take all the, I don't want to cut tails uh, shorter until I know I've locked them in in some way, including that last one. So I'll end up pulling them all through like that, but you always have to kind of, you're gonna always have to fool when you finish a crochet edge, you're always gonna have to fool with it to get the knots nice on top again, because you see, you want all the little knots to be facing up to you, right? So that they all look even, right? So it's not super time consuming, this technique. Um, and this is my big mistake, was right where I happened to start at the same time, too, as I hadn't gotten that even. Make sure your hooking is even. That's the main thing. But I'm probably going to go back in here and add a few more loops, trim it down. I can see other places where I forgot to finish, right? There's a little holiday here. But all in all, this is, this is a very nice finish. And is it faster and easier with thicker weight yarn? Absolutely. There's no question about that. But... 
The sock yarn is very compelling because it's very sleek, shiny, and it comes in all these really alluring colors. So it's all down to you, but it can make a very nice border that incorporates lots of elements of your piece. And it's a nice and light border too. So yeah, maybe it's something for you. I will see you next time at Ribbon Candy Hooking.